use of any psychedelic um, substances, or is this something that through the use of the system, they will eventually be able to, I guess, awaken those uh, similar functions? Yeah, I don't think that using drugs is a permanent state of... I think that it would be, I guess, like flashpoints. And I know that it's probably kind of taboo to say that drugs are not the way, but I think that they are they are one of the ways to experience uh, permanent states of what might possibly be, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, more uh, temporary states of what, we can, what would be more permanently established through other kinds of methods that are more disciplined. But drugs can be a discipline, and, and I'm not, and and they can be an adjunct to things. But I, I don't necessarily think that they should be um, the only tool in the toolbox. Of course, they have to be one of the tools in the toolbox. Um, mm-hmm. Pharmacology is certainly one of the tools. Of course, um, there's no way around that. But right. it's not the only tool, and it shouldn't become any more predominant than any of the other tools. I, I would say. Um, Yeah, my, I was going to say I agree with you because I view those things as like training wheels. Ultimately, the the usage of those things would show you what you're trying to achieve naturally. And if you can replicate those same effects through a natural medium, but, you know, through the use of the system, that's ultimately what I would try to be aiming for were I to be using substances like that. I view them as training wheels, so to speak. And I think that um, anybody who gets wrapped up in the um, constant usage of any substance to do magic with is only fooling themselves because eventually they're going to experience, I think, really negative consequences. <laughs> I agree, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, um, and uh, the reason why I decided to address that tonight was because a lot of people have a misconception that magic is like sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and I think that um, you know they have this whole thing that people of m- much lower like. Uh, moral stature get involved in what they perceive to be the dark arts and so i think right. that yes it's important for me to uh, address that with you because i don't want anybody walking away thinking that this is something that's going to require them to do something that they feel i guess is not something they want to get into yes absolutely that's certainly something that needs to be addressed because the occult and things like this attract a lot of the worst of the worst you know and a lot of uh you know, sometimes just you know, every 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 you know every situation gets people that are misled and things. But somehow, it seems to be predominantly people sometimes that you know they are a little bit too into drugs and they are into this dark side. A lot of this whole undercurrent, which is fine, subculture is totally fine. Except that you know, sometimes people are very young; they get wrapped up into this stuff, especially a lot of hard drugs. Sort of it mingles with uh, people that are into this. But again, it's because of the, you know, the whole, whole interface with music and the whole art art scene, and they're all equally um, infiltrated with drugs and, and craziness. You know what I mean? So it's no less in the occult than it is in, in music. You know, I've, I've been pl- in bands and everything else, and or any other you know art artist uh, community. So it's just it's, a, it's it needs to be said. Thank you for saying yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely because. Uh... Well, you said it all. So um, can you tell me a little bit about um, the tarot system that you um, used and uh, what actually you tried to change within that tarot system that was not maybe addressed with the rider system or maybe Aleister Crowley's uh, Thoth system? Yes, that's a good question because that's actually the basis of the entire thing, which is essentially just a new Kabbalistic tree of life, which is this, if you can imagine... I got rid of Malkuth and just made Doth a real Sephiro. So it's just symmetrical. It's it's more symmetrical in that sense. But the reasoning behind that, um, I mean, I, I could go on for hours giving reasons behind it, but that's the basis. That That's the essential change because it's based on this different, essentially a different schematic for the for the cosmos because the tree of life is is now not based on Malkuth being the first level. Um, it's based on Yesod being the first level. And the reason I did that, or the reason I started doing that, is because, like I, again, like I said, the, the sun aspect of this of this kind of threefold system would be all that stuff already. So that, that all that traditional stuff is, is already kind of preliminary to the system. 
that I'm, I'm already dealing with. So starting on your soul just already means that, you know, you've already went through that system. So the, the tree being put on its side and being and being cut from Alkuth essentially is symbolic of the fact that you've taken already the, the established steps so that you're accessing this from the beginning of your of the situation already. And and it's kind of symbolic of the state of the world right now where the world has cut themselves off from all this kind of, kind of stuff. So the world's not connected. Yasod and Malkuth are not connected under any way, in shape or form, at this point of, of the world. So I mean, I, I look at it like as a symbol for that kind of dual um, aspect to keeping me aware of how great the chasm is between what it is I'm trying to do here, things like what you're trying to do also, of course, every, everybody that's trying to uh, practice magic or be, be part of esoteric study, and what they're doing with their other part of their life. So it's kind of a symbolic, um, you know, hat tip to just reinforcing that notion that's already in the original tree to begin with, but it, it also changes the paths. And, and Doth is, again, a, a full materialized Sephiroth. I mean, so it's no longer invisible because it's the house of occult knowledge, so to speak. It's it is the, the 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 hidden, right? So it's in order for this system to kind of make sense that it was this genetic, um, uh, invisible genetic force or genetic information. It's just sort of like an information processing system that you're trying to tap into. So in order to symbolize that. Doth hadn't become a real, a real accessible, full-blown sephira with paths leading into it, and I not see. just kind of around it or through it, like hyperbolically. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, so does the does the configuration of the tree of life? How does it? Um, how does it differ then? Do you have like uh, a different pattern? You know, people are from the lightning bolt that shoots down, top all the way down to the bottom of Kuth, um, and uh, with you making. To ask a, a real sephiro there, um, how would that change the path or pathways that lead one up to that realm? They change. They still have, luckily, 22 paths. So nothing like that radical has changed. I still used, I still used the Kabbalistic letters to attach the paths to it because I was going to use those same correspondences to link it to a tarot system mm -hmm. so all that is still in place it's just that doth and and tifereth to to stop you for a second but your audio it's completely stuck so the paths are just um um just uh the um the link into to, to, to making a full-blown tarot system so that the, the past don't change. But a lot of the stuff is actually based on English that I've been... Uh, that's, an, that's kind of another issue, but it, it's all based on essentially the, the original 22 paths, but, but Tal and Aleth link together. So there's no opposite ends like there is on the traditional tree where you got out of Kether... It's Aleph and Beth and, and, and so forth, all the way down to the end where you have the, the final letters. So this is more of a circular thing, which is actually based on the concept that Aleph, and this kind of links it to a lot of the mythology, is that it obviously means ox, as we, as we know. And um, in Egypt, the North Star um, was, a, was a, a cow's leg, right? A calf's leg, if you, if you know about that, how they portrayed things. So if you look at the Temple of Dendera, or Dendera, however, however you wind up saying that, the the North Star and, and Polaris, which was not fully the North Star during the time of High Egypt, but they represented that constellation as a calf's leg. So we call it, you know, um, the big and little dipper up there, and we have Polaris inside that. So Aleph is is essentially the four note the four the Big Dipper in all of its aspects throughout the day. So mm -hmm. it makes this swastika figure. So that's that kind of linked me into looking at Tal as the, 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 the winter solstice version of mm -hmm. Polaris. Because if you look at Tal, it's just 